Thank you very much for that introduction. Uh, you know, I'm going to write that down for my next <laughs> version because I didn't know half of those things myself. But uh, thank you very much. First of all, uh, happy uh, Women's Day. And uh, just uh, on a lighter note, I, I wish my daughter, who's nine years old in the morning, happy Women's Day. And it was mind-blowing for her to give me the reply to say, why is there a day for women? I was just so, uh, you know, blown away to think that, you know, there's, women are excelling in so many fields today that the next generation doesn't even think there has to be a parity between the two genders. So, again, happy International Women's Day to one and all of you and more power to you. Um, so, uh, good morning and thanks a lot for Entrepreneur Magazine and Web3 to have me here. It's a, it's a delightful honor and it's always a pleasure to be back in uh, Bengaluru, the tech capital of India. And thank you, Sanjeev, for setting the stage for me. Uh, big shoes to fill. So I represent Vedanta Semiconductors and Display Limited. As many of you may be aware, Vedanta is one of the world's leading uh, minerals and resources uh, companies, which is across India, South Africa, Namibia, Liberia, UAE, Korea, Taiwan, and Japan. Uh, Vedanta has significant operations in uh, oil and gas, zinc, silver, copper, iron ore, steel, nickel, aluminium power and glass substrates, what I'll overlook at, a critical component for most of the electronics projects. So I truly believe, I truly believe that India is next in line to become something bigger than the original Silicon Valley. And I want to talk about this word Silicon Valley because this is what has happened, right? The US has taken 40 years to develop 40K plus startups in ESDM software alike. Taiwan, the Shinchu and other places has taken 25 years and they have built about 400 plus companies. India in 5 years had built 27,000 startups and like Sanjeev had pointed out, 120,000 in total. This is just ESDM startups I'm talking about, but 120,000 in total. And that is the acceleration that we see in India. It is massive steep curve and, and, and we are looking at it in a, in a way that it's going to take over the global economy to make India the fifth country to have a Silicon Valley. <clears throat> so let me uh, talk a little bit about what the what the Silicon Valley is and its inception. So as India embraces to become the largest ecosystem for electronic manufacturing globally, let's look at what helped the Silicon Valley in the West. The transformation of the valley began uh, in earnest in the 1960s with the establishment of the first semiconductor company which led to a lot more technology companies coming up and later transforming the region into an epicenter of technological innovation that, is it, that it is known today for. So the value, the valley put US on the map, right? And the technology innovation got the prosperity there, the economic prosperity and shot their GDP all the way to $128,000. The Silicon Valley's journey to becoming a global innovation hub has not been straightforward. It has involved substantial investments, a high startup churn rate of 90 of 100, and a continuous commitment to consumer satisfaction and innovation. From semiconductors to personal computers, and from computer software to internet-based businesses, innovation and technological inno evolution have ensured the sustenance and the growth of the Silicon Valley. If we look at jobs as a metric, 1959 there were only 18,000 high technology jobs in that area. Today, that has ballooned to 1.8 million. So inspired during a visit, to this Silicon Valley, Taiwan's then Minister of Science and Technology, Xu Xian Su, proposed building the Shinshu Science Park, which was established in the 1980s. So over three decades, the Shinshu Science Park, which all of you know, has become the hub for 400 plus companies, and these are all including hardware and software, including giants like TSMC, UMC, Apple, AMAT, Philips, Tokyo Electron, and Inolux, among others, and multiplying their GDP by 1.4x, making it $34,000 now. So it is safe to assume that creating an electronic manufacturing hub in India, our own Silicon Valley, will have similar or rather accelerated outcomes. So another example, when we look at is Paju in Korea, the LG city as they call it, right? So the LG's display cluster, just one company, it hosts 80 companies and 50,000 individuals working there. So LG Display stands out by exporting 90%, 90% of its products outside of Paju, becoming a hub for substantial contribution by a single company to the region's economic viability. 
So where are we now and what is required for India? KPMG estimates that development and adoption of cutting edge technologies like 6G, 5G, satellite communication, semiconductors, etc. have the potential to collectively and approximately $240 billion addition into the India, India's economy in the next five years. That is massive, my friends. Given the projection by the ICEA, the Indian electronic manufacturing sector will reach $115 billion in 2024. It is imperative not to remain passive for the forecasted growth of $300 billion in 25 and 26 because all of this is going to be imported. Our import bill is going to be this much and we need to start the manufacturing and indigenous products in India. So there is a pressing need to establish India's own robust ecosystem, enhancing local domestic value, addition to accelerate and capitalize on the projected growth that we are envisaging. For the success of India's own Silicon Valley, I always say there are three pillars that are essential to keep it in place. Technology, ecosystem and talent. So let's talk about the first pillar which is technology. We need to build specific R&D labs that will sustain a healthy growth of intellectual property and facilitate the master, uh, mastering the art of operational efficiency and process know-how in production grade technologies. As we are in Taiwan and other com companies like that, R&D is the heart and soul of all of the sustenance. 25% of your revenue is spent back into R&D, one of the highest numbers in any manufacturing companies, any type of manufacturing sector companies. TSMC was not TSMC on day one. Samsung, which, was, which is an R&D behemoth, was not uh, a Samsung on day one either. We need to start somewhere. In technology, we need patents, know-how and research, research methodology. We have 20% of the world's population right now consuming electronics in India. Therefore, technology companies are keen on localizing and bringing tried and tested technologies and consumers to build affordable electronics for the masses. We don't need technology for high-end $1,000 smartphones. Our economy needs a smartphone which is under $100. We need an LCD 8K TV which is three times cheaper than a high-end OLED TV. All of this is possible when technology companies and partners start looking at India as a viable option to locate their factories. The government of India has in fact identified this opportunity and laid out the subsidy of 50% of cap expense for large high-tech manufacturing industries like semiconductor and display. And why is that? Right? Because we import 100% of these goods. We are currently $10 billion in display panel imports, becoming $60 billion in 2025. That's, that's six times expected to triple by that even by 2030. Semiconductors, we import 25 to $30 billion uh, and that is going to become 110 billion dollars, 4x by 2030. This is that is massive, and with government support to build these through local manufacturing, we will get the value add of 10 to 30 percent with semiconductor manufacturing, and in display 20 to 60 percent immediate import substitution as soon as we build this manufacturing in these sectors. And this includes everything from smartphones, TV, automotive, notebook, etc., in the hands of the public. And that's technology, my friends. So the second pillar I'd like to talk about is ecosystem. With the introduction of these large manufacturing facilities, we will have about $80 billion worth of ecosystem players co-locating or locating in India uh, companies that will assist the, the, these nucleus companies, right? these nucleus fabs. These companies will not come to India with the vision and mindset to cater just one factory. The government of India and companies are envisioning multiple fabs to reach economies of scale for this ecosystem. For example, Indian consumption alone can accommodate 10 to 12 display fabs and 8 to 10 semiconductor foundry fabs. We are going to need specialty chemicals, gases, special ICs and design companies providing software services to these manufacturing companies, which will cascade further to attract 100 plus Indian MSMEs to build startups around this ecosystem. You'll find every young person out there taking a display panel or a chip and saying that I'll put the plastic molding and make my own Oppo, I'll make my own Vivo. And this is what China went through last 10 years. We are going to uh, multiply that tenfold when we start now. The foundation of this ecosystem requires in its heart utilities where, which several states are providing like clean water, redundant power network at battery limits, waste treatment centers, etc. and a robust logistics infrastructure. 
India already has a 200 plus manufacturing units for mobile phones, sub-assemblies and components established and scattered across the country in the past few years. They employ approximately 7 lakh people already. A compelling testament to the success of government in establishing local manufacturing that can serve as a model for the global ecosystem players. We will need companies from Taiwan, Korea, Japan, USA and many other countries to start locating in our ecosystem and that means not only building an ecosystem for the industries but building a social infrastructure within the ecosystem premises will be imperative. Schools, hospitals, access to a major city within one hour of travel, three to five star hotels, recreational spaces like malls, golf courses, community clubs. That's what it means to build an ecosystem. It builds a community. I remember uh, meeting a leader from a technology company in Shinshu and he said, my kids go along with uh, the kids of another very prominent stalwart in the same industry and they go to the same school together. So that is very conducive to an intellectual and healthy community to increase substantial output of innovation and entrepreneurship. That's about the ecosystem. Number three, about the talent that we need. Academia is a very key contributor to talent. If we look at Sinchu Science Park, right, adjacent are two of Taiwan's science and engineering powerhouses, National Yang Ming Chiao Tung University and National Tsinghua University, similar to the UC Berkeley and Stanford in California. Roughly 15 lakh engineering students graduate every year in India. India needs to upskill these young engineers and this has already begun. Last year, LAM Research as, as well announced that the government of India is scaling ecosystem. It is going to train 60,000 highly qualified Indian engineers in nanotechnologies over a 10 year period. So in conclusion, by addressing existing challenges and capitalizing on our strength, India has the potential to make Silicon Valley a reality. Becoming a global, a global leader is not just in design, but also in shaping the future of technology through its unique brand of innovation and manufacturing prowess. We are at 2,500 uh, uh, GDP today. With these industries, there is nothing stopping us from doubling or tripling that to 6,000 to 7,000, giving purchasing powers in the hands of every consumer out there. Truly, when we make this ecosystem of fab and electronic manufacturing, we will make India go from a developing nation to a developed nation in a switch. Thank you all for listening.